So far, um, we created render layers. We have an occlusion and wireframe. And we also have a group that's animated, so our object is rotating in a 360 degrees, which is excellent. The next thing we need to do is actually batch render this so that we can create all these images and put it in After Effects and then go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle this. Um, it all happens in render settings, so let's open up our render settings. And we're gonna go to our common tab. We're gonna kinda tackle one at a time. The first one is called the file name prefix. Um, basically what it means is that you are going to, uh, you see how up here it says file name, it says wireframe turntable dot if, right? That's basically what we're going to be looking at and um, um, when you do a batch render it's going to name um, a folder called wireframe and then it's going to call it turntable if. Uh, if you like it that way that's fine, I'm going to change it. Uh, there's a fancy little thing called percent %l, whoops, percent %l. And if you look at that, it actually percent %l actually means layer. So right away you can see that it says wireframe.if. So that's the name of the layer. If I put a backslash, I think it's backslash, um, you're going to see that it's going to create a folder. And then I can do percent %l again. So what it's going to happen, if you look up here, is that it says wire fr uh, wireframe backslash wireframe. So that means that every render layer is going to create a folder called re whatever render layer that is, and then name those images whatever that render layer is. So in this example, it's wireframe. It's going to create a folder called wireframe, and every image in that is going to be called wireframe. And occlusion, same thing. It's going to change it right here. Occlusion is going to create a folder called occlusion. And then finally, it's going to call occlusion the image. OK, so that's perfect. Um, let's go ahead and change our format. I usually use TIFFs. It's just a nice, uh, where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> like, where's all this stuff come from? Um, let's see. It used to be so simple, guys. It used to just be JPEGs and IFs. And now it's like mental ray, blah, 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 and all this stuff. So I'm just looking for my little TIFF. It's right here. There's my TIFF. You can see that now everything's going to convert it into a TIFF. Um, we actually do have an animation, so name.extension isn't going to work. We're actually going to go ahead and say name.number.extension. Okay, so right away you're going to see it says occlusion 1, occlusion 10. Now, do not get confused. I see this happen a lot. Name.extension.number, that's going to give you problems. So basically, it doesn't. It thinks that the extension is a number. And it, and then computers are like, I don't understand. I don't know what to do. Just make sure that it actually says name.number.extension. OK? So the TIFF is at the end. All right, frame padding. Um, go ahead and change that to like a 3. The reason why is because we're going to have 360 degrees, now, um, 360 frames. And basically, instead of just having 1, 2, 3, you're going to have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3, all the way to 360. Which brings us down to the next one. Right now it says start frame is 1. That's fantastic. But end frame 10, that's not going to give us anything. We actually have 360. So let's go ahead and change that to 360. So it's going to batch render. 1 through 360. Perfect. Keep going down. Renderable cameras. Perspective. Nope, that's not the one we want. We want render cam. Go ahead and select render cam. If you choose perspective, you're going to have some problems. It's going to, uh, you know, it's not going to have the white background, right? So make sure that you use render cam. And finally, we have our presets, which is our image size. This is where the 640 by 480, the one I mentioned earlier, is uh, located. 640 at 480, well, it's, uh, it's a 1.33 aspect ratio. And to be honest, that's actually 1970s television. Now, basically, almost, I'm not saying everyone, almost everybody, especially in the animation world where you guys are trying to get into, we actually are more into the HD. So let's go ahead and go to HD. It's going to change a couple of things. It's actually going to make this longer. So let me go over here, right? So when you change it, it's always, it probably is a smart idea to do it earlier. So, but uh, I think it still looks okay. I'm going to go to my wireframe because it renders faster. And then I'm going to render. And you're going to see the difference. It's significantly bigger. Right? So this is the one we had before. Whoops. If I click on one, one, see small. Then I go over here to big, go one, one, and now it's big. 
So it really does make a difference. It has nicer quality um, renders, and you definitely want to go for this one. It does take longer, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's close that out. Looks good. Back to my render settings. And that's basically it. Oh, yeah. Don't forget this part, the path. Where the heck is this project going to? Right now, it is going to project's default images. Uh, that means that I didn't create a project for this. I just opened the file. You can't do that. You actually need to create a project for every pro ev anything that you're going to create. It needs a project. So let's go ahead and create one right now. File. Let's see. Project window. We're going to click on new. I actually recommend this that you do this first before you wait. This is very bad. So this is going to be my uh, turntable. Turntable example. Um, let's see. That's the name. I'm going to go to my little folder. And I'm going to place it in a desktop just because, um, you know, Good pla easy place to find it. It's up to you where you guys want to keep it. Then click Accept. And what's going to happen is that it uh, doesn't look like anything happened, but if I go to my desktop, I have a, a folder called Turntable, example. I open that up, and you're going to see that it's got all these great folders, everything that Maya needs. And scenes is actually where we're going to put our Maya file, which is, uh, let's go ahead and save now. So file, save scene as, and look where it places it. It automatically goes to a specific folder. Automatically goes to the desktop, the turntable, scenes. So I'm going to call this again, turntable, and I'm going to call this uh, version 1, and I'll keep it as a Maya binary. And now take a look at it. Look at the path again in our render settings. It's actually going to put it in the desktop under turntable uh, example under images. It's going to place it there. All right, that's perfect. I know exactly where it is. I know exactly where my file is. I know exactly where my images are going to go. Now I'm ready to render. I'm going to pull this down to rendering, render, batch render. Whoops. Yes. Go. And look at the bottom. This is the script editor, and it's basically telling you, okay, something's happening. I'm thinking, oh, something's happening again. So let's go ahead and click on this little guy right here. That's going to open up the script editor. And if you have nothing else to do, you can actually watch this thing render. So it's going to give you increments of 5, so that's 5%, 10%, and it's doing occlusion first. And you can see that it's working on occlusion 001 TIFF. You can also see that it's going into our turntable example, our images, our occlusion folder, and that. So I'm going to wait for this to go up to 100% so that I can show that you always want to make sure that it's working. That means that you just don't want to get up and leave, come back 10 hours later and be like, oh my gosh, it's the wrong camera. Oh my gosh, something went terribly wrong. So it's really important to actually check to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So I'm going to minimize this. And uh, again, I'm looking at my turntable folder, and I know that it is in images, convenient, and look at that. There's an occlusion folder. Hmm, I wonder what's in here. Well, there's occlusion 1001. Uh, it's the first frame. Well, it's 128 bytes. That means that it's still probably rendering. Now it is HD, so it is going to take a little bit longer. Right now it's at 30%. And um, what happens is that it's basically using the you know, the power of your PC. So the faster your PC, the faster the renders are going to be. Um, you know, some companies are very fortunate, like Pixar and ILM and all those big companies, and they have render farms. And these massive render farms, some of them brag that they're the size of football fields and stuff like that. Uh, basically, every single one of those computers will take one frame, render it out, and give it back to you. So unfortunately, um, in this scenario, I have my one, my one render farm, which is my one PC, and it's chugging away. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to go ahead and render, and then I will be, I will come back. I'm going to pause uh, the video, and I will come back when it's ready, so I can show you what to look for. Oh, look, it's 40 percent. Woohoo! I'll be right back. Finally, it finished one render layer, uh, one frame, and let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to minimize my uh, Maya here, and there it is. There's my occlusion 01. It's working on 002, and uh, you, well, it's a little bit of banding here, but uh, that's okay. Can smooth that out. 
Um, let's see. So you can see that when we rendered it, you should always test render it to make sure everything looks okay. It still works. I am going to have like a um, wireframe on top, but uh, just keep that in mind. Let's see. Uh, so everything's looking good. Looks like it's going through the right camera. And I'm just going to go ahead and let it do its thing. This is a good time for me to walk away. Let this guy render. Um, you can actually close Maya out and walk away, and it would still render. So if you do a control alt delete, and I'll show you what I mean. Bloop. Got tons of stuff going on. Look at my memory usage. You're going to see that's got a Maya.exe, and it also has a Maya batch. This is actually a separate processor. So Maya obviously takes a lot of memory, so I really don't need it to be taking up so much space. So I can actually go ahead and save this if I want to, and then close it. Which is a really nice way of basically saying, okay, well Firefox is taking a lot of memory too, but now Maya batch um, can keep functioning. So you're going to notice that it's still rendering. And it's going to continue rendering until it's done. If you need to turn this off and you see a mistake, you can all, and um, you don't have Maya anymore, um, you can actually go into Maya Batch and say End Process, so select it and End Process. Um, if Maya is still open and you're like, whoops, I made a mistake, then you can always go to um, Render, Cancel Batch Render. So it's the same place that you'll find um, the batch rendering. So you're going to go to Render, Batch Render, the same place. You're going to see something that says Render, Cancel Batch Render. And it's going to keep on going until it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guys continue uh, rendering. I am going to... Um, Wait for this to finish, and then the next step is once this is complete, the final step is After Effects. We're going to put it all together. All right, we'll see you there.